I can still hear, in my mind that is, President Ronald Reagan saying something to the effect of, well, here we go again. Yeah, here we go again. We have another saying here in uh, North America, and it goes something like, thank God it's Friday. Well, today's Friday. But you know, when you're retired, every day's Friday. In fact, you have to think about, you know, what day, what day is it? <laughs> um, yeah, or every day is Sunday. They're sort of all the same, right? Especially when you're shut in with this COVID thing. Uh, the only way you know what day it is is when you look at the bottom right-hand side of the computer screen and, well, there it is. That is if you have the same operating system I have. I use Windows 10. I think probably most people do. Anyway, uh, I, I just finished bending these two little ladders here. I, I did not use Andy's uh, handy-dandy photo etch bender here. Um, I actually used the uh, Tamiya bending tool, photo etch bending tool, and it, it, it works really well. You know, if you're wondering how well it works, it works really well. It's, it's a little bit more difficult to, to get the, the part in, in the exact right place so you don't bend in the wrong place. It's a lot nicer, you know, to, to be able to just take and, and lay the little, the little piece on the photo etch bender and, and then manipulate it in, into place. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm sure you can figure that out. I'm going to readjust here and I'm going to try something different. I'll explain uh, what I'm going to do differently. And, it, and the reason I'm going to be doing it differently is because one of the viewers made the comment. Uh, well, just let me rearrange everything here. Now, maybe I should mention here that I have decided not to use the brass black. And uh, when we get into that, I'll explain why. Uh, yeah, it, it, it probably would have worked, but, uh, well, like I say, I'll explain why later. Uh, however, now, now speaking of comments, when I'm reading the, the comments, I, have, I never have any idea. Well, no, that's not true. Sometimes I do know whose comments I'm reading. Um, but I, what I was trying to say is I don't know sometimes if I'm reading the comment from an armchair modeler who is just copy-pasting his ideas or thoughts, or is it from somebody who's, who's really experienced. Well, one, one of the uh, people who's been commenting for about four years, uh, this goes way back to when I was cranking out... Uh, uh, pen turning videos pretty regularly. Um, he he made a comment last night, and he mentioned how and and I didn't realize he had he had done this, and and I feel kind of uh, ashamed and embarrassed that I I didn't realize, uh, but but he made the comment to the fact that he had made the uh, HMS hood, uh, and he did it from scratch. And I believe it's it's uh, 190, 192 scale. So in other words, it would be slightly larger than the than the uh, model we're building here. Uh, and, and he uh, he posted a link to the video of it. So uh, uh, it's actually quite good. Now, if I remember, and I have a tendency to forget the good ideas that I have during the day uh, when I'm posting everything at night or in the late afternoon. Um, but I'm going to try and remember to put the, the link to his video in the description <clears throat> in today's episode. Uh, so if you want to, if you want to watch it, uh, in full screen, you can, but, uh, yeah, he, he did a really nice job. So, uh, what I'm trying to say is sometimes people are commenting who are far, far more skilled than I am. And I'm amazed that they're watching this because <laughs> uh, I, I don't think I'm that great. But anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> anyway, now, another person commented, and he said that if you start bending the, the treads from the top and work your way to the bottom instead of the way I did it yesterday, it works a little better. 
So I'm going to slip the macro lens on. I'm going to just try it here. I, I, I wasn't going to show any bending or anything of, of these, but uh, I, I just want to try it here. I, I think his theory might make sense. Um, and I'm also I'm going to use these tweezers here instead of these ones here. I remember in the past these ones actually worked quite well. So, so just let me rearrange again and we'll, uh, we'll move in. Now you will notice there's a little dark mark there on my cloth, pretty much in the center of your field of view. So if I keep this more or less on that, on top of that little mark, I know that you can see it. Because I do have a tendency when I'm getting involved to uh, move stuff around and later on when I'm editing think, oh my goodness, can't even see it. Now, when I was starting at the bottom rail, like we did yesterday, and when I would bend it up like this, because the 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 top was touching the table, it, it just it just didn't flip away on me. But but what's gonna happen here now is that when I go in and grab the top one, okay, it's gonna have a tendency to want to flip up on me. So what I'm gonna have to do, see if I gotta get this in there is maybe hold this down like this. There we go. All right. Now, where's our little black mark? Oh, there it is, okay. Now, when I pull this out, whoops. This is harder to do on camera than I thought. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just hold it down here gently. Come on, Ron. Okay, then squeeze this in, push this in, like that. Okay, now I shouldn't need to hold the end down. There should be a, enough uh, stringer out at the end here that it's not going to do that. Uh, please excuse my big unkempt finger here. There we go. Whoops. Remember I was saying uh, yesterday about be careful, don't grab two? And, and I have in the past, and then you've got a mess on your hands. Now fortunately, most of these ladders, or some of them anyway, you don't see the whole ladder, so the part that's damaged is quite often. Okay, now this one here I bet more than the others. I might have to just go over these and sort of tweak them just a little bit. This, this one here looks like it could be just a little bit more. There we go. All right, how does that look now? Yeah, I think, I think those all look pretty even. Okay, I'm gonna do the other one the same way. Okay, what I did was I held it up a little bit closer to my face here and and it uh, was actually a lot easier to do. It went really, really fast. It was just sort of sort of like snip, 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 almost. Well, not quite that fast, but anyway, it went quite well. Okay, I've just had a sip of coffee. Hopefully my voice is going to hold out here for what I want to say. And uh, what I'm going to say is I, I don't mean to offend anybody. Uh, the other day I was watching uh, somebody uh, and he was using a little scale to, to measure his, his uh, paints and his thinners. And then he mentioned how uh, thinner may not weigh the same as the paint per volume. In other words, a milliliter of brass black, for instance, may not weigh exactly the same as a milliliter of water. Although, because brass black <clears throat> is sort of water-based, I believe it's going to be very, very close. 
Now, I've, I've known about this sort of thing since way back when I was about, I think I was about 15 or 16 years old, and I was trying to build a boat. And um, in case you're wondering, it, I, I never did get it completed. But I was trying to make it out of what I could scrounge around. And I wanted to know how much would this boat carry? Well, I knew that a, uh, a Canadian gallon weighs, now we're talking Canadian gallons, weighs pretty much exactly 10 pounds. And from what I remember, there was 6.6 .6 gallons in a cubic foot. So that would mean a cubic foot of, of air in your boat would support or displace, uh, you might say, uh, 66 pounds. And, and so I was, I was, I've been acutely aware of the fact that different, different uh, liquids do not weigh the same per volume, for their volume. For instance, I knew that gasoline, now if memory serves, gas, a Canadian gallon of gasoline weighs about 7.2 pounds, whereas a Canadian gallon of water weighs 10. So you can see there's a difference. They're both liquid, but they don't necessarily weigh the same. Um, now the reason I wanted to know how we had to, I knew about how much gasoline weight is because um, when I was younger, we I grew up around what you might call light aviation, uh, bush flying and stuff like that. That that was part of my life. In fact, when I was in my early twenties, I I got my pilot's license. I don't now I don't think I had to know how much uh, gasoline weighed to get my pilot's license, but it was of interest to me. Now on the other hand, maybe it is because uh, weights uh, and and stuff like that are are very important. Now I, I'm starting to ramble here. Sorry about that. Anyway, the brass black may not weigh the same as the water. Thinner will not weigh the same as, as paint. It's probably lighter uh, per volume. So what the other uh, person was trying to say when he was weighing was maybe using a scale like I do to, uh, to measure stuff out is not too accurate. Well, I fully agree. However, it's close enough, especially when you're using, I think, uh, acrylic paints, which are water-based, that the difference is going to be negligible. Now, I think I've gone on and on long enough about this. Now, somebody's probably saying, oh no, here we go again. Okay. Just going to concern myself with that spot where we. Okay, I, I would think we probably got rid of all the blue tack and candle wax. And right there where I put my finger. Okay, so now what is this all about? Well, what it's about is I have never looked at brass black closely to see what it actually looks like on the surface. Okay, I do believe I got, I got this pretty clean. I'm not going to worry about the other side. Now, I only want to do this once, so I hope it's going to work out. Okay, what do we got? 30 grams. So let's bring it up to 60. And it should be approximately right. Now I meant 3 grams, not 30. And we'll bring it up to 6, not 60. But I think you can figure out what I'm trying to do here.
Okay, that's approximately right. Now, like I said, the brass black is probably not the same weight per volume as the water, but it's going to be close, close enough. We have a little bit more solution this time than we had the last time. Just want to make sure that the water and the black brass is, uh, or is it brass black? I can never remember. I get it wrong half the time. Uh, just want to make sure it's mixed. And uh, I'll do the time lapse thing again. And uh, I will have to agitate every so often. So once again, it's going to look like I'm poking at it. Okay. Here we go. Well, I'm guessing about five minutes has passed here. And uh, see if I can get that out so I can see what it looks like. Just trying to hold it different to the light. It, it seemed to do a much better job today than it did yesterday. Uh, could it be because we we did uh, an extra good job of cleaning off the uh, you know using the ultrasonic cleaner and isopropyl and all that kind of stuff it, it does appear to you know it's, it's almost embarrassing to me here because it's it's so much better than yesterday's uh, attempt now maybe maybe I, maybe I will put the ladders in there and because cause that almost looks black to me. That, that is much, much better. Um, <laughs> even the other side. I, I think I'm going to, I think I'm just going to quit here. Because if I build up a, a, the, an oxidation on it, which is what I actually wanted to look at, Um, I'm just, I'm just trying to decide what I want to do here. Well, I, th I think I'm just going to take that out and, and, and rinse it off in water now and, and, and we'll just take a look at it because that, that really looks black to me. Maybe, uh, cleaning off the brass, uh, the photo etch brass is, uh, the way to go first. Now I gotta think about this. What am I gonna do? Let's let that dry off and uh, take a nice close look at it. I'm not noticing any brass showing. It's it all looks it all looks black to me. I guess I don't need to overdo it, do I? It's hard to get out of there without scratching it. Maybe these tweezers might work better. Yeah, we got the problem with the scratching, don't we? Mind you, I, I would have that with paint too. I was scratching it with the sharp tweezers there when they were scraping across when I was trying to grab onto it, but uh, Oh yeah, look at that. You can see the uh, the the black is coming off. Now it it could be that leaving it in there for that length of time was was just too much. Uh, that's a bummer. Let's put on the super macro and have a look at that once it dries. Okay, we've got this thing mounted on a piece of double-sided tape here. 
probably can't see it. Now I only get one shot at this. So if I bump it out of range, we're uh, up the creek without a paddle, as they say. So I just want to scratch this now. I'm, I'm barely pushing on it at all. Barely pushing on it. Now there's something that just crossed my mind here. If I scratch the ladders while I am uh, installing them in the ship, I can't touch them up. Whereas if I paint them, yes, then I can touch them up. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of pressure, just very, very slight. we're going to paint. But you know what folks, that's going to have to be tomorrow. So thanks for watching and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.